Hi, this is Jim Ferguson, Track Studio. You know, it's always nice to be able to mix business with pleasure. So, without further ado, let's get on with the mix. Ladies and gentlemen, on this tape, for the first time anywhere, bootleg outtakes from an Orson Welles commercial recording session. And now, if you've ever had a difficult session, these tracks will absolutely make yours look like a Cub Scout meeting. Now, what is it you want? Nothing. In your depths of your ignorance, what is it you want? Also, an in-depth interview with one of the greatest ad men in the world. He'll give us the insight on Plop Plop Fizz Fizz, Snickers, and the Three Musketeers campaigns. Leaving no turn unstoned, we'll conduct a flash talent contest of Louis Valeria broadcasters. You'll hear the truly craziness of Gary Burbank, the determination of Carl Shannon, Tom Van Howe with Page One makes his debut, and we'll look at some of the best Louisville area commercials for the month. All of that after these words. <clears throat> Track Studio is the only broadcast-oriented recording studio in town. We turn produced product within less than 12 hours. Time, one of the most important elements you have to deal with. At Track Studio, we understand. You may recall in our last presentation, we introduced the Track's action van, scurrying about the city picking up last-minute production work. Well, a good idea, but limited. Limited to 55 miles per hour. But now, Track Studio breaks the sound barrier. Tracks moves up to the speed of light. The Tracks Telescriber. Truly faster than a speeding bullet. As fast as your mouth. Here's Chuck Cowdery, Fessel, Siegfried, and Moeller activating the Trax Telescriber for a Biley Ford production. Um, of the very beginning, I want to just make the, uh, the beginning of both the radio spots exactly the same as the TV. So it should read, Biley Ford presents So Long 79, the biggest sale in Biley Ford's history. Trading values have never been higher. And the announcer comes back. Presents So Long 79, the biggest sale in Barley Ford's history. Saddle up, Pilgrim. The big roundup said Barley Ford. Starring the luxurious Ford Thunderbird. It came from Detroit, proud and powerful, until its price was slashed. And featuring the roomy, family-sized Ford LTD. L, um, uh, 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 LT, uh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's just one heck of a, of a good car. Also starring rugged Ford F100 pickups, plus a cast of hundreds of new 79 Fords, each with a low so long 79 price right on the windshield. You'll witness prices never before seen on the big lot. Try your eyes, sweetheart. Trading values have never been higher. Byerly Ford's production of So Long 79 is a limited engagement. Sale ends Tuesday, August 21st. Now I ask you, was that fast or was that fast? Painless, too. The Trax Telescriber can be reached at the same number as the old Trax Action Van, 945-6778. Incidentally, is anybody interested in a slightly used van? Warning! Warning! Presentation time has now exceeded three and one half minutes. Listening beyond this point will constitute earthly entertainment. Busy executives frown on entertainment during business hours. But what about Orson Welles? Yes, we are familiar with him. He wants to make documentary about us. Anyway, on with the show. Orson Welles. One of the greatest commercial voices in the world, but sometimes difficult to work with. If you will, close your eyes and imagine yourself being producer for this session. We know a remote farm in Lincolnshire where Mrs. Buckley lives. Every July, peas grow there. Do you really mean that? I, yeah, so in other words, I, I, I'd start half a second later. Don't you think you really want to say July over the snow? Isn't that the fun of it? It's, it, if you can you make it almost when that shot disappears, it'll make my... I think it's so nice that, that you see a snow-covered field and say every July peas grow there. We know a remote farm in Lincolnshire where Mrs. Buckley lives. Every July peas grow there. 
We aren't even in the fields, you see. Yeah, we are. We're talking about him growing, and she's picked him. Yeah. On <coughs> what? On in July. I don't understand you, then. When must, what must be over for July? Um, when we get out of that snowy field. When I was out, we were onto a can of peas, a big dish of peas, when I said in July. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Yes, always. July, yeah. I'm always past that. You are? Yes. Well, that's about where I say in July. Can you emphasize a bit in? In July. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Sorry. Um, There's no known way of saying an English sentence in which you begin a sentence with in and emphasize it. Get me a jury and show me how you can say in July and I'll go July. down on you. That's just idiotic yeah, if you'll forgive me by saying so. That's just stupid. In July. I'd love to know how you emphasize in and in July. Impossible. Meaningless. I think all they were thinking about was that they didn't want to... He isn't thinking. Well, sir, can we just do one last... Yeah. Week? And it was my fault. I, should, I said in July. If you can leave every July... You didn't say it. He said it. It's, it's every July. Your friend. Every July? Mm -hmm. So after this show... No, you don't really mean every July. It is. That, that's but that's, a, that's bad copy. It's in July. Of course it's every July. There's too much directing around here. Norway. Fish fingers, no, Findus, Norway. We know a certain fjord in Norway, near where the cod gather in great shoals. There, Janst uh, Stangeland. Shit. A fraction more on, the, on that shoals thing, because you roll it around very nicely. Yeah, roll it around, and I have no more time. You don't know what I'm up against. Because it's full of, of, of things that are only correct because they're grammatical, but they're tough on the ear, you see? Yeah. This is a very wearying one. It's unpleasant to read. Unrewarding. Because Findus frees the cart at sea and then add a crumb crisp, cool crumb crisp coating. Ah, that's tough, crumb crisp coating. I think, no, because of the way it's written, you need to break it up because it's not, it's not as conversationally written. What? Take crumb Take out. Take crumb out. Good. Here under protest is beef burgers. We know a little place in the American far west where Charlie Briggs chops up the finest prairie fed beef and tastes. This is a lot of shit, you know that. You want one more? I do, actually. Yes. More on the what beef? You, you missed the first beef, actually, completely. What do you mean, and missed it? You're emphasizing prairie fed. But you can't emphasize beef. That's like he's wanting me to emphasize in before July. Come on, fellas, you're losing your heads. Right. I wouldn't direct any living actor like this in Shakespeare. Well, you do this. It's impossible. Orson, well, so you did six last year, and by far and away the best, and I know the, the reason. The right reading for this is the one I'm giving it. At the moment. I spent... Twenty times more for you people than any other commercial I've ever made. You are such pests. Now, what is it you want? No, I think in your depths of your ignorance, what is it you want? Whatever it is you want, I can't deliver because I just don't see it. That was absolutely fine. It really was. You, you, it isn't worth it. No money is worth it. Hmm. Some days are like that in the world of advertising and commercial production. It can be terribly frustrating. But then again, when the production's finished and it's top flight, terribly rewarding. And it's not just a man's game. More and more women are finding that out. Back in a moment with a special salute for two of those women who've just recently answered the challenge of broadcast production in Louisville. Good morning, Shirley. Welcome to your first day on your new job. Your typewriter's in your office. Good luck. Uh, Mr. Bosley, uh, could I have the day off? What? Furniture Liquidators is having a great weekend sale, and I... Sorry, th Shirley. Better get to your desk now. <laughs> yes, Shirley? Uh, Mr. Bosley, my grandmother just called. She's not feeling well. <laughs> it won't work, Shirley. Uh, you just want to attend the great sale at Furniture Liquidators. Now back to your typewriter. <laughs> What is it this time, Shirley? Mr. Bosley, I'm not feeling well. Shirley, Shirley, come in here, please. This is your first day on the job, Shirley, and the only way 
you're going to attend Furniture Liquidator's Great Labor Day sale is to get fired. Fathead. <laughs> you're fired. Gee, thanks. Furniture Liquidator's Great Labor Day weekend sale runs now through Monday, September 3rd. You'll find markdowns up to 50% in every department. Fantastic savings. A sale almost worth getting fired for. Furniture Liquidator's now with four locations, Louisville, New Albany, and Middletown, and our newest location in the Radcliffe Plaza, Radcliffe. See Sunday's Courier for more details. All stores open Saturday and Sunday till 6, Monday till 9. As you might imagine, Steve Bass of Bass Advertising also uses our tracks telescriber. Furniture Liquidators is repeating a sellout. This solid pine living room suit covered in warm earth tone fabric sold last month. Track Studio salutes Ann Goncha of Delaney Advertising and Jonah Coulter at Bonn, both recently just arriving. Welcome from the House of Tracks. I'm a simple girl. Yes, Jefferson Federal Savings and Loan, and I'm the Jolly Green Dwarf. No, no need, need to, to explain, explain short wrestling. We two are green. So you are. Well, what can I do for all of you? We wish to purchase their $100 certificate of deposit. Will 37,000 Clark Gorns cover it? Clark Gorns? Gee, I don't know what the rate of exchange is these days. Look, Earthling, we understand that the greenhouse our savings will grow. They will. And for as little as $100 Earth money, we can get a high interest certificate of deposit. That's right. Well, we didn't come all this way. Right, right. Let's see the color of your Clark Gorns. Hey, green. What did you expect, Pierce? Good point. Then let's do business and hurry. We're triple parked. Just sign here and we'll get you started. Say, how'd you hear about Jeff Fed? In the galactic word of mouth. Any place that calls itself the greenhouse is our kind of place. Mine too. Well, thanks. We'll plant your savings and get it growing. So long and <laughs> don't take any wooden clard gorns. You are exceptionally strange, Earthling, even if you are green. Jefferson Federal Savings and Loan. Your greenhouse. Member FSLIC. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, advertising plays a key part in everyone's life in this day and age, and when it just so happens that this afternoon we have with us one of the uh, more uh, uh, enlightened and educated advertising men uh, on a national scale, as it were. Your name is... Uh, right. Hmm? Mr. Wright, is that? Right, Mr. Wright. Right, Advertising's right. the game, Wright's the name. I see. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wright, uh, mm -hmm. how long have you been in advertising? Oh, I've been in advertising for 20 years. 20 years? 20 right? years' time. Uh-huh. Seen a lot of biggies. I suppose you have. I've been there when they talked about the first big one. The fir what was mm -hmm. that? Your fir you mean your first uh, oh, sure. client? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. What was... Uh, I'd walk a mile for a... I'm sorry, we can't talk about that, sir, no. on the radio. Oh, okay. uh, Are you an independent advertiser? Or you yes, I am independent now. All my partners have uh, bailed out. <laughs> All by myself. Independence, <laughs> right. Do a lot better. Take my 15% right off the top. <laughs> but you know the old advertising expression. Hey, what is the old advertising? 15% of nothing is nothing. That's, That's right. I mm -hmm. suppose you're right there. Mm -hmm. What other uh, outstanding uh, advertising campaigns have you waged? Oh, I've uh, been in on the biggies. Let me tell you one of my so most successful campaigns that we ever ran, all, all right. right? This was a biggie. They came to me, they must have had, oh, they must have had 50 or 60 dollars to spend. <laughs> just, you know, just to throw out the window, right. just for ideas. Right. You know, ideas? Mm -hmm. Ideas are the key to our business. That's right. Right. So they were working on this product, this, so you shouldn't, I don't know whether I can say the word over the radio. Well, we'll try it, we'll blip it out. Burp. Burp. 
Burp is all right. Burp is all right. Yeah, I do it on my show occasionally. Burp. Right? Right. Well, there's a product on the market. Burp. Oh, it's anti-burp depression. Something like that. Yeah. No burping. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Very, very big so in, they uh, wanted to have a guy say that he had, you know, partaken in something and it made him burp. And he took the product and he was fine. I came up with a great slogan. What was that? I can't believe I ate part of the thing. Big burp campaign. <laughs> big. They must have laid $50 out on that easy. <laughs> I can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, money. My secretary, a new typewriter ribbon and everything with that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, how did you start, Here's sir? How did you start in uh, the advertising game? Well, I was standing on the corner of Lexington Avenue and 45th Street. In and a woman came up to me and... Oh, no, that's another story. And I was standing there, and I saw the sign in the window that said, Advertising Executive want, Wanted, uh -huh. come right in, $45 a week, must know how to type. So I went in there and got the job. I see. Mm-hmm. That's it, huh? Yeah, and from there, it was steadily one step after another into the old <laughs> commode, man. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh at a man who's in the twilight of his career. Mm -hmm. Just don't pull the lever. No, should never do that. You know, another successful campaign I had was for a candy bar. A candy bar? Kids like the candy, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, I had big, I had big ones. I had the giggles, guy ran a corner, took it, ran with Snickers, made a hundred million dollars. <laughs> Stole my idea, right? Remember the old famous biblical story about the 12 musketeers? 12 musketeers? Right, I had that, guy did it, chopped nine, made a fortune, right? Three Musketeers. Big story. You don't remember these things. These are the old days of advertising. Uh, yeah, it's very old days. You uh, still uh, have your company, do you? Oh, sure, sure, sure. We call it R.A. R.N.? R.A. R.A. Mm-hmm. Try to read my lips. R.A. R.A. Right. <laughs> what does that stand Rip for? Rip-off advertising. <laughs> That's the name of my... Don't laugh. That's... I built a fortune on this company. I'm going to leave my son. Box of number 12 pencils is what he gets. It's all in my... My will. I suppose you've seen uh, a, uh, the aging or maturing of the advertising game. Oh, yes. About. Oh, sure. It's getting much more mature now. How is that? Well, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, you couldn't say... Not on my show. It's one of my big accounts. What other local campaigns have you handled? Sir? Oh, lots of biggies. One of my most successful campaigns. Mm -hmm. In fact, all i got to do is sing a little of it, and you will remember, and a big smile will come over your face. Let's try it. Are you ready? Yeah. Little test. Mm -hmm. Test of advertising is when you sing the jingle, everybody knows. Yeah, without mentioning the client's name. Right. Okay. You ready? Go ahead. All i got to do is say, let's see, four or five words. Do it. Save a dollar a day. That was mine. Want to make a deposit? You go down to LaGrange, and it'll swing pretty good for you down there. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along ever so quickly. Yes, sir. Right. You, uh, I understand also from your fact sheet here, are very big in undergarments. Women's oh, yes. Undergarments. Yes, yes, uh, yes. You can't be afraid of the word. you got to come out and say to the ladies the actual word. Bras. Uh, what? Bras. 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 B-R-A-S. Yes, I wasn't. I was. -A I thought we were going to, uh, all right, do it with a little finesse, but since we're not, no, go ahead. wrong with the word bras. Women wear bras. Okay. Right? Right. Bras. Okay. That's a nice word. Try it. Bras. Bras. See that? Didn't hurt a bit. <laughs> right. Okay. Excuse me. I got a pink slip here. Uh, anyway, all right. So what, what is your campaign in that area? Well, there are a lot of different kinds of bras. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of different kinds of women. Right. So you got to find the right bra for the right women. Woman. <laughs> I'll laugh at an old man. <laughs> Been in this game. You weren't even born when I started in bras. <laughs> I may walk out of here. <clears throat> well, Mr. Wright, it's been a pleasure hey, having you with us Hey, it's been my pleasure. Afternoon. You're a nice fellow. I want to thank you're you for a, dropping You're a very by. nice young fellow. When I was young, I was like you now. Well, nice. that's good. But before I leave, I um, want to tell you about a new campaign. Uh, uh, Mr. Wright, on. we are... Uh, for dentures. Out of... Fantastic uh, Out of uh, You put your teeth time, in a drawer. Mr. Wright, You lock actually, the drawer. We really and do you leave the have drawer. to move on. And you flood along. the drawer uh, with this blue stuff. Mr. Wright. As soon as the drawer explodes, I don't Talents of the late Jeff Douglas from the days at WHAS. Jeff did afternoons at HAS. The same shift Gary Burbank now has. When Gary dropped by the track studio, it became a riot. Cause Gary never travels alone. If you will then, it's time for the track studio flash talent contest. Here's Burbank's Blues Band and San Clemente Blues. Alright, if you guys are gonna be in my road band, you better get your act together. Alright, let's boogie. One, two, three, four. I hear that train a coming, it's coming round the bend. I ain't seen the White House since I don't know when. I'm stuck in San Clemente. The time keeps rolling on. While old Jimmy gets the 
glory. Me and old checkers get some bar. When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a bad boy, cover up everything you've done. But my cover came up short. Dworsky burned my ass in court. No, I'm not even a Democrat. But I hear that gavel pounding. Opportunity to invite you to order your very own special $500 copy, leather bound, of my memoirs. And for $5 extra, I'll have it mailed to you special delivery. And for $500 extra, I'll have G. Gordon Liddy break into your house and leave a copy on the living room coffee table. All right, back to the trains. I hear there's a party meeting on that fancy dining car. They're making shady deals and smoking big cigars. Well, I know I had it coming. That's what tortures me. All right, let's boogie. Get down. Boogie with your bad self. Get down. Get down. Oh, by the way, my publisher says the final 50 pages of my book are so sad, they'll bring tears to your eyes. And for this reason, the final 50 pages will be printed on Kleenex. Then maybe J.C. will call me or feel sorry for me and start accepting my calls at the White House. Who knows? Right, J.C.? Dick, you can call the White House. You can call me any time. Your advice I seek. Just make sure it's your dime. When your phone's not ringing, Dickie, that's when you'll know it's me. Your record's over. Oh? And now you got a record. <laughs> now there's an act that's hard to follow, but Carl Shannon tries. In the back of a lonely Texas bar, he sits there all alone. A silver trophy by his side He traded for love at home And it's true he came the hard way To fulfill his cowboy dreams And the day he rode in the silver saddle Today he's cowboy king Winning was all he wanted All that's left is the coming down with no place to land when he gets there For there is no solid ground Never once did it cross his mind Where the road would take him from here As he says to himself, hell, I made it this far And orders another beer and bring more for my cowboy friends They'll all be joining me soon To drink away their lonely nights And curse the cowboy moon Winning was all he wanted All that's left is coming down With no place to land when he gets there For there is no solid ground in the back of a lonely Texas bar, he sits there all alone. A silver trophy by his side, he traded for love at home. And it's true, he came the hard way to fulfill his cowboy dreams. And the day he rode in the silver saddle, today he's cowboy king. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. Now, Tom Van Howe and Front Page. Cosmos kids, the playboy said, the polish I 
outside, but all the That just about wraps it up for this month. It's been a busy one, but then thank goodness for that. We always appreciate the business and try to reflect it in our work. It's kind of like a presidential appointee. He serves at the president's pleasure. We attract serve at your pleasure. So it's important, nay vital, that each of your sessions be a pleasurable experience.